that the children of Israel have changed their glory. They serve other gods now. And guess what? Y'all serve other gods right now today and have no idea. Young man right here, let me ask you a question. Do you celebrate Easter? Nope. I can't hear you, bro. Come on, speak up. You mean myself? No. You celebrate Easter? I'm talking to a young brother right here. I heard you, bro. What about uh, Thanksgiving? You're a good friend. No. What about Christmas? Do you believe that God says that we should celebrate those things? But you, you do it in church, don't you? Think about that. Read it again. Listen up close, bro. Listen close. This is for you. Hath a nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods? But my people Listen have good. But my people, you are God's people, young man, have changed their glory for that which pro which doth not profit. So he's saying these things that we go and celebrate, these other gods, they don't profit us. And I'm gonna give you an example. Uh, come over here a little bit if you can. You see this man right here on the sign? You recognize this, this man on the sign right here? Matter of fact, do you recognize this man right here? Who is that? Come, come close, say it on the mic. Who is this man right here? Jesus. Say it again. Jesus. Now who is that right there? Who is this? Jesus. Now, see, we recognize this man right here as Jesus. That don't profit you, young brother. That's how the, the most High describes uh, Christ right here. That's how the Bible describes Jesus Christ. Look at that. Amen. Hair looks just like your hair on your head, don't it? The Bible describes Christ as a black man. But when I showed you the scripture, it says we change our gods. And we, we read that one more time? No fact. But my people have changed their glory for that which does not profit. This white image of Christ does not profit us nothing. You know why? Because the black men go in these churches with this white man as Jesus, and guess what they do? They come out black devils. They still hate their people. When you hear people say things like, buy black, be for the black man, we black first, we black only, things like that, not necessarily in those orders, but we for our people. When the black man hears anything about unity amongst itself, what does he say? Oh no, what about all other people? What about everybody else? The first thing we do as a, as, a, as a race of people, we want to include everybody else, right? Because this guy right here is on our brain. Come on. Be astonished, O ye heavens, at this, and be horribly afraid. Be ye very desolate, saith the Lord. Now get to, uh, show me the image of Christ before I forget the point. Watch this. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. So, so John is about to give us the revelation of Jesus Christ. He's getting ready to show us and describe to us Jesus the Christ. Now let's see right here if he's talking about a white man. Go to the church down the street and ask them, what does Jesus Christ look like? What are they going to tell you? He's a white man with blonde hair and blue eyes. You see, he don't like that, do we? You don't like that, do it. The brother get mad when we expose the lies the white man been teaching us. Right. The white man's been lying to you, brother, with gray hair. Right. So you want to try to argue against me because we're showing the Bible says? Right. That's an elder right there. Bring it up! He's mad because the Bible says that God is black. That's the right. Bible says that his son is black. Right. The Bible says that his people are black. Come right. on, bro. Bring it out! Bring it out. Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. Bring it out! The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Now come on, we're gonna get to the point. He said, this is the revelation of Christ. We're gonna reveal to you Christ right now. Give me the verse 11 right there. Verse 11, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest, write in a book. And my man with the orange on. This is how the Bible describes Christ. We're in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 14. Listen good. Bring it out. His head and his hairs were white like wool. It said his head and his hairs were white like wool. White like wool. His hair was white and it was like wool. Come on. As white as snow. As white as snow. Come on, bro. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Come on. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. He said his hair was white like wool, right? It was white like wool. It was white and woolly. That's one thing the Bible describes about Christ. 15, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. So the next thing it says about Jesus, it said Jesus' feet was like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. A man right here with the blue hat on. You know what, what color brass is? You ever seen a, a like a like a, a almost like a penny? You seen a penny before? You said it's dark, right? Bronze. Bronze. Now, if you took a penny or if you took a, a bronze, it's kind of like that goldish, almost like like something like this, right? 
You took that and put some fire to it, put it in the oven. What color do you think it's gonna come out to be? You put anything in the oven, a furnace is an oven. It's, gonna, it's, it's not gonna melt, but it's gonna do what? It's gonna burn. When something burns, what color does it become? Black. It becomes black when something burns. Burn some, burn some rice, what color it come out to be? Rice, rice burns and it's white, and we see that. When rice is, sorry. When, when rice burns, it turns black. We all can see that. When the Bible says his feet was like fine brass burned in the furnace, we don't think we don't think that's black. He go go to Daniel real quick. Go to Daniel. He go another. He go another vision because they would say, you know what? This is John. John was fasting for so much time. John was dehydrated. John he didn't know what he was talking about. That was that was a lie. Y'all brothers misinterpreting the scriptures. Okay, okay, okay. For you naysayers out there, because guess what? The white image of Christ has captivated the minds of our people. When you see the white man, you see Christ. Bring it up. That's why our brothers get so astonished when we say the Bible says Christ is a black man. Brother, the Bible says you and his chosen people. Brothers get astonished behind that thing. Brothers want to fight us behind that thing. Watch what the Bible says. Come on. Daniel chapter 10 and verse 5. Then I lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of Euphaz. So Daniel saw Christ right here also. I bet you they would teach that in the church. Come on. His body also was like the barrel. He had on a green garment. Listen close, bro. And his face as the appearance of lightning, and his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet like unto color to polished brass. It said his arms and his feet like unto color to polished brass. Guess what? That's the same thing as burnished brass. That's the same thing as brass burned in the furnace. The same thing over and over and over again. So how is it then? If the Bible says that Christ is a black man, how is it that we have this white image of Christ? Get Revelation chapter 13. I'm going to show you. How is it that we have this white image of Christ? Bring it up. And why is it our brothers hate that thing? Bring. They love the white man as Jesus. And my man with the green shirt on over there. You believe the Bible, cuz? What's, what's up? What's wrong with the Bible? Talk to me, man. I ain't trying to put you on spot. I'm trying to build with you. Okay, well, matter of fact, get Rev, uh, Psalms 19.7. He said he's trying to listen. He don't like, he don't like the Bible, he don't believe in the Bible. But Lord's will, I can compel you through the scriptures, bro, to see what the Bible's good for. Because we have the Bible in our communities, right? We got, we, we got the Bible, right, as a people. We still messed up, ain't we? The problem ain't root, I done told you already, is this white man that's God, bro. The black man does not see himself as a king the Lord set up, period. We don't see ourselves as nothing. That's right. He said he's trying to listen. Oh, praise it, bro. I'm, I'm going to build with you. I heard you. Come on. Psalm chapter 19 and verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. So the first thing we want to deal with is the law of the Lord. The Bible says the law of the Lord is what? Perfect. Come on. Converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Making wise the simple. So we want to deal with these few parts. It says the law of the Lord is perfect, right? So if something is perfect, that means you can't find no error with that. You agree with me? You see a girl, you say, man, that girl is perfect. That means she what? She does everything you want her to do. She cook, she clean, she get dressed, she whatever, right? She's perfect for you. So the Bible says the law of the Lord is perfect. And what does it do? Converting the soul. The law of the God should convert you. And my man with the uh, with the black, come out at me real quick, fam. Come out with me for a few minutes, bro. Ah, oh, man, come on, bro. Just give me five minutes of your time. We're trying to put you on some some some, some true knowledge, bro. Okay, so, so what we teaching that's different than the white man's teaching. Well, what's the truth then? Let me know. Put me on game right quick. Bro. Let, let everybody know that we know what you talk about. Because guess what? My duty is to compel my people to get their minds right. And I'm not saying your mind is not right. But my job here as a teacher, as your brother, is to make sure that you don't go home still in this white man's mind state. Oh, no. That's right. It is. So what we teach, that's different than what the white man is teaching. What you mean? Real, what's the real culture? Where, Bring it where out, bro. I'm, I'm with you. Everything. You know why not? Because they're gonna burn up. Mm. Everything in this world needs what? Sun. Sun. Right. To live. To sustain life, right? Real talk. Okay. We get energy, our connection from our hair. Okay. You know why? That's why they cut, tell us to cut, cut our hair? Because our energy comes from it. Really? They hate everything about us because we are the original people. We are the Israelites. That we, I, I agree with you about that. We are the children of God. So what does that mean that we're the children of Israel? We what's are your, the what's, tribes. What, what does that mean now? Get huh? Deuteronomy 10 and 12. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you what that means. Because for the brother over here, yeah. he said he don't, he don't really believe in the Bible too much. I'm going to ask you. This is, this is the Bible, bro. King what, James what Version. Version. 
You know King James was a uh, homosexual? Uh, ah. I like to see the proof on that. You like to see the proof on I that? I like to see the proof on that. He black and he was white. The, we, we, we understand that he was black through research. He was black research. man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, through research, we, we, we found out he was a black man. Not a white man like they taught us. Okay. But I like to see the proof that he was uh, homosexual. Because the rumor that he was homosexual got spread 80 years after he died. 50 80 to 80 years after he died, he said, oh, nah, he was a homosexual. So when you dead, who gonna argue for you? Okay. Nobody gonna argue for you. Okay. I don't even know you, fam. I'll be like, yo, 50 years from now, my man with the red on, hey, my man, that was a white dude. Who gonna be there and say he wasn't white? Yeah, right. Nobody. But that's what but happened with him. How do we know what we know is true? Good, good question. Watch this. I'm gonna show you this. Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 12. And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee but to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. So you said one thing I agree with you on. You said we are the 12 tribes, and that's true. But knowing that, what does the most high require from us? What right? Is what? what is the most high God required from you that you know that you're Israel? You gotta walk on a narrow path, man. We just, we just read that, you indeed. Can't, you, can't, you can't be swayed between the Come on, man. You, you, so you speak the truth. Trust me, I know. Right. I know but you said, how do you know it's true? Get um, um, Deuteronomy 28. I'm gonna show you how I know that this is true. How we know this okay. is true. How we know the Bible is a true book. Bring because people read this Bible and they say, oh man, the Bible is a white man's book. Oh, I'm not, I don't gotta read the Bible because the white man gave us the Bible in slavery. And, and the white man, the white, because guess what? They still let the white man on their mind as Jesus Christ. But I'm trying to tell you, it's something deep. We don't see ourselves as nothing great. We see ourselves as second-class citizens. Look at these young people out here. Ask these young people, do they see this stuff as great? Are y'all great, young people? Are y'all great out here? When you go to school, are you great? No, you wild in class. The teacher be cussing you out of class. You get disrespected everywhere you go out here, black man, young black woman. We're not great nowhere. But God says we great. How can we don't feel like it? What you got? Now I'm going to show you how we know the Bible is a true book. Listen close, bro. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So the prophecy said the Lord is going to bring the children of Israel into Egypt again with ships. He's going to bring the children of Israel into Egypt again with ships. Now, do you know what Egypt is represented uh how the, how the Bible represents Egypt? Get um Exodus, Exodus chapter twenty and verse two. I am the Lord thy God, good. which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. He said, "I brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage." You intelligent brother. What is what's another word for bondage? Slavery. Perfect. So he calls Egypt the house of bondage or the house of. Like you said, house of slavery. Come on back to it. Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. Watch this. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Now That's the Bible right. describes Egypt as slavery, as a house of slavery. So he said the Lord's going to bring you into the house of Egypt, what, the land of Egypt or house of slavery again. How? With ships. Come on. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. For bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. Right. So he says, you're going to be sold, you're going to be taken into the land of Egypt, which is slavery, right? On ship. By way of ship, my children are going to go into slavery. Now, who did that happen to, brother? In the last 500 years, who, who went into slavery on slave ships? Say it again, bro. Say it loud. The so-called black man. The so-called black man went into slavery on ships. My, my man right here. How did you get your last name, brother? Whatever it is, I don't know what your last name is, fam. You are, how, how we get it? Tell me so I know. But see, brothers, it's a shame to say it. It's a shame to walk around with a white man name on them. I ain't mad at them. We got our names from the white man. The white man enslaved us in this country. And guess what they did? They raped our mothers. They raped our sisters. They raped our brothers. They killed our kids. The white man did some of the most atrocious things in history to us under the name of Christianity, under the guise of white man Jesus. So when brothers walk around with that white man's name on them, I ain't mad at you, bro, because you don't know no better. I had that white man's name on me. Say it again. The white man's name is Esau, according to this Bible right here. Esau, that is true. What is true? That's not relevant, bro. What you got? Read 68 again. 
Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And I'm not saying it's not important, but it's it's not it's not it's not relevant. Matter of fact, um give me his name, it's called the word of God. Revelation 19. Revelation 19. I'm gonna show you, bro. I'm gonna show you before you go. Watch out, I'm gonna show you. Because brothers do get tripped up over the name of the most high. Right? But even having the name of the most high is not gonna save you. Because when you read the story in Exodus, they had the name of the Most High God. They went through the, uh, the Red Sea, and um, like ten. They went through the Red Sea. They wandered the wilderness for forty years, and a whole generation of men and women perished. And they knew the name of the Most High God. And matter of fact, Christ His Son was floating around them in the clouds, right there on the spot, and they knew the name of God. Right? I'm gonna show you this. 19 verse 13, and He was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. This is talking about Christ. He said he was clothed with a, dip, a vesture dipped in blood because when he comes back, it's going to be a whole lot of bloodshed. People think Christ come back for roses and, and hanging out. When, when, when the Bible just talk about the return of the Lord, it's going to be that millions of people dying out here. They can show you that in the Bible. Well, come on, what you got? That's why it says the vesture was dipped in blood. Read again. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. What is it called? The Word of God. What is it called? The Word of God. It says his name is called the Word of God. Now give me Psalms uh, 138 and 2. 138 and 2. 138 and 2. Give me Psalm 138 and 2 for it, brother. I ain't, I ain't forget your point. But the Bible says Christ, his name is called the Word of God because he, the book was written about him. This whole Bible is about Christ. Psalms chapter 138 and verse 2. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. Thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. He says, Most High, you magnified your word above all your name. Because this was going to save you. Just think about it, for instance. If the Lord says, keep my commandments and live, right? Keep my commandments and live. And you know his name. To get salvation, you got to keep the commandments, right? But you know the name of God. When it's time for you to be judged, and you didn't keep not one commandment, but you know the name of God, are you going to be saved? Are you going to be saved? To be saved, you got to do my, do my word, right? Do what I tell you to do in order to be saved. You know my name. When it's time for you to be judged, will you be saved tonight? Did you do what I tell you to do? I did not do your word, but I know your name. Are you going to be saved? That's an easy question. The answer is no. But people want to get a shortcut to salvation. Ain't no shortcut to salvation. I understand, fam. And I showed you, it's, it's talking about the word, you know, because people get twisted up on the name. We don't got the matter of fact, get the um uh, Zephaniah, is it three and eight? Yeah. It's three and eight, right? Three and eight. Three and eight. Watch, I'm gonna show you this. I ain't trying to come back to you, bro. We calling them we we call him a God of Israel, bro. We call him a God of Israel because look, that that's an escape. That means I don't gotta keep the commandments. I can just say you calling on Baal, brother. Hey, that means we don't gotta do what God says. Okay, that's we do that. We do that. Zephaniah chapter three and verse eight. We're not calling on Baal. That's not what I'm saying. But brothers make their argument, oh brother, you say, come on man, we got to keep the commandments. Brother get tripped up on the simple stuff. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 8. Therefore wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day I rise up to the prey. For my determination, listen good, listen good. for my determination is to gather the nations. So the Lord does have a determination to, to gather the nations. So you heard about that before us all come together and we're all one in Christ. You heard that before, sister? How do you? 14, what's your name, young lady? Okay, listen good. That I may assemble the kingdoms to pour out upon them my indignation. So he said, let's gather together the nations so I can pour out my indignation. That's a wrath. I'm going to bust them up. Even all my fierce anger, for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. For then will I turn to... Once he devours this earth, right? Once he destroys this earth, what is he going to say? For then... Will I turn to the people a pure language that they may call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent? So once the Lord comes in and, and scours this earth, destroys this whole place, then he's going to give us his true name. So let me ask you a couple of questions. You say your name was Cam Camille. Camille. Who is this guy right here? They who, who, that's who they call Jesus, right? So who do you, who do you recognize as Christ? Okay, let's get that real quick. Revelation 114. You probably came in on telling of that. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 14. His head 
and his hairs were white like wool. So it says his head and his hairs were white like wool, right? Who got hair like wool today? You know what a wool, a wool is, right? Like a, like a sheep. Who got hair like that? Just look around. Look at that brother hair right there. Do you see a sheep, a sheep hair just like that? Your hair just like that, believe it or not. As white as snow. It was white as snow. It was white and woolly. Come on. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his feet like unto fine brass. It says feet was like unto fine brass. Are your feet a different color than the rest of your body? Not a different shade, but a different color. Your face is brown. Are your feet are your feet blue? Your feet yellow? They're the same color as everything else, right? And his feet like unto fine brass. As if they burned in a furnace. So it said his feet was like in as it's black in color as to fine brass as if they burned in a furnace. Now you take anything and burn it. What color does it turn out to be? Come out to be black. So that's easy to see the Bible is talking about Jesus Christ. And it's also easy to see that it describing his color as a black man. Right? It describes him as a black man, but we got this on the walls, don't we? We go to church, we go to church right there. They got this man on the wall. Get um uh Somebody saw him before. You want to take his mother's song? Yeah, so, uh, good. So how how we got this then? Ask ask them that. I didn't paint this. I didn't I didn't say this was Christ. We only got the Bible. This right here is just a representation. That's not what Jesus looks like. This is a representation. Hair like wool, uh, skin uh, of brass, eyes red with fire. We're not saying that this is Jesus and worship. We're not doing that. The white man says this is Jesus right here. Ask the white. Ask the authors of this. Why we got this? Go to that church and say, we never seen Jesus, so why I got the white man on your wall for? What do you want to tell you? It doesn't matter what color Jesus is. It doesn't matter if Jesus, God is colored right. It don't matter until he's not, he's not white no more. People don't care about Christ's color until he's not white no more. Right. The Bible says he's a black man. Uh, what you got? John chapter 7, verse 38. Bring it up. He that believeth on me, as the scriptures have said. This is Christ. Christ said, he that what? He that believeth on me. As the scriptures have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living waters. So Christ says, when you believe on me, as this Bible has said, that's when you will get the full understanding. Not with this white man as Christ. You can't, you can't possibly believe that Jesus is white and you got the true understanding of this Bible. There's no way possible. Because everywhere in the Bible you see our people, just think about this. You know about Africa, right? Where Africa is on, on the planet? Uh, what color are people in Africa? Who got a, where the map of Africa? Where the map? There you go. What, what, what's the color of the people in Africa? Sis? They're really dark, right? Now come close. Let me show you something. The land of Israel is is uh, about right up in here, right? The, the land of Israel is right up in here, right, right up in this area, like right over here, right? These people is all black in Africa, right? How is it that people that was right here on this side of water are white and these people are black? These people over here are black. These people up in here are black. But somehow these people right here are white. That makes sense to you? That make no sense to me at all. But we're being pu pu pushed these lies. I'm telling you, it's a, it's a, it's a, get on um, Psalms 83. It's a conspiracy out here against you, a young lady like yourself. If the white man can convince you to accept this image and, and convince you to accept his religion, you turn your back on your whole people. Because if you don't really see yourself in this Bible, you go for anything. Or you say, you know what, the Bible's not true. The white man, you, you, people do that stuff too, but the Bible's a true book, we're gonna show you. Psalms chapter 83, verse 1. Keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the hand. So it says your enemies, the, the enemies of God, the enemies of God's people, they make a tumult. They become strong now. Come on. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. What they, do? they have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. So it said they took crafty counsel against his people. You know what that means? They all get together in meetings. They get the Watergate, the owner of the Watergate. They get the owner of the Metro PCS. They get the white owners of the Christian church. They get the Arabs over here. They all get together and say, how can we, what can we do to get all the money out of the black community? What can we do to keep black on black violence at an all time high? What can we do to keep single mothers coming to the WIC and the welfare office? What can we do? You know what they do? They feed you this. They tell you God's laws are done away with. 
They come up in here and they come in and, and lock our people up. Look at all the police driving around here. Why are they around here for? They to lock people up, but to enforce their laws on them. If our people apply God's laws, it won't be no need for no police out here at all. You know, you know the Old Testament said to deal with somebody who was uh, stealing? It says if you catch them stealing, you can kill them. Under certain situations, God said you can kill somebody who's stealing from you. Under very specific situations. If you catch them and it's a daytime, yo, you pay like seven times what you stole from me. That's just, that's easy to fix. But we come steal from each other all day and day, and, uh, day in and day out around here. And what happens? We get locked, the white man lock us up, but our minds don't get fixed. Our minds don't get fixed. Brothers get locked up in prison, come out, and, and worse than what they came in for. Uh, what you got, what you got? Now give me um, uh, Psalm 19. I'm running my mouth for you. You got any questions, young lady? Don't be afraid. If I can answer, I'm just gonna say I don't know. Listen up, bro, we, we good, fam. That's how the Bible describes Christ. That's not, this is not God. That's how the Bible describes him. The Bible don't describe this man at all. The Bible describes that man. So is that supposed to be Jesus or Christ? Because that's what I, that's what I've heard Jesus look like. I never heard of what God looked like. Okay, okay. People mostly talk about Jesus, but I just, like, I, people say God, like, made the earth and stuff like that. He made Jesus. Right. But Jesus the, one made the Bible describes Jesus as a black man with white hair and with, with a white woolly hair. The Bible describes Jesus as what you see portrayed here. The Bible don't describe Jesus as this. This is a lie. We know this is a lie, young lady. This is a lie from hell. This is completely a lie. One hundred percent false. No, nothing to do with God at all. This is the opposite of this is Antichrist right here. Oh, uh, get the one of Daniel. Watch it, watch it. This is God, how God just got. Daniel chapter 7 and verse 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit. So the Ancient of Days is talking about the Most High God, the creator of, of earth, right? Come on. Whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. What was his hair like? Pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels burning as fire. So the Bible describes the Most High God as having hair like the pure wool, brother. The Bible describes the Most High God as having hair just like you, fam. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org